Listen, the EU result uh, was a disaster all around. I mean, Cameron managed to get 42% of Conservative supporters. He's the leader of the party. He's the one who's called the rapporteur. Sure, but we always got knew that of we his needed Labour votes. We always knew that he needed Labour votes And we got Labour win. votes, just not enough. He doesn't get nearly enough. I mean, the, the, well, your area... Well, 64%, we needed 70%. Your area voted strongly to leave. Yeah, yeah. You're not a Corbynite. This wasn't just a problem uh, for Mr. Corbyn. No, no. Uh, Yvonne, uh, Yvette Cooper's area lost. Indeed, a, every Brownite, uh, a centrist Labour MP, their area, outside of London, they voted to leave. Yeah, but it was about Europe. I mean, if you look at the elections, which is only just over a year ago, in most of those seats we had an increased majority, including mine. The issue of Europe, and in particular the issue of immigration, because this became a referendum on immigration. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about that. From the time the, the net migration figures mm -hmm. came out, 333,000, it turned from a debate about Europe and the economy. But uh, Im immigration was always there, but suddenly sure. it was really like, It's one of the mistakes Boris Johnson made in his article we've just been talking about in the Telegraph yeah. on Monday. He said it was nothing to do with my immigration. Well, I think it was. But these were people that the politicians had ignored, derided, dismissed called bigoted, if they even raised it. There were large Labour voters in large numbers and they ignored their party. This was their probably last chance to give the establishment well, of the centre-left and right a bloody nose and they did. That's your assessment. I don't well, accept that you. these people were, were, were ignored. I don't accept that we never talked about immigration. Sometimes it seemed to me we didn't talk about anything else. So you're debating this it. issue. Well, we did in the sense that, you know, here, here was the Prime Minister fighting two elections on promising to get net migration down to the tens of thousands. Here was the same Prime Minister encouraging people to vote yes for you, having not just failed, but mm. got... A, I mean, net migration that, was 118,000 when well, I was That's why they voted Secretary. against them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is so, this, is so, this the right perspective to see it through? Yes. <clears throat> I think it's a lethal combination <clears throat> of people being worried about immigration and despising the elite and whenever they raised the question of immigration with the elite the elite changed the subject actually Gordon Brown was again the best example during the referendum campaign he was asked about immigration and first of all he said it was uh, a, a BBC obsession mm -hmm. then he said it was an obsession of the Sun newspaper and the only, Sim the only issue was illegal immigration he said simply would not acknowledge that the people want to talk about it whenever David Cameron was asked about immigration he started to talk about the economy when Jeremy Corbyn said that you could not limit immigration if you were inside the European Union, the Labour Party set upon him for the cardinal sin of having told the truth. But was it not more than just immigration? Was this not also a revolt of people who hadn't done well out of globalisation? That in big cities like London, most people think that overall they've done pretty well out of globalisation. If you go into the Midlands and further north uh, of the north of England, there are plenty of people who don't feel they've done well. And that inequality has widened and the world has kind of passed them by. And this was their, this was their revolt. Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, a, a vote um, in, in the only way that became available to them. I mean, general elections certainly haven't helped. Um, to be clear, this is, this is the, 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 the neglect, the absolute neglect that has resulted in daily struggles, daily stress, daily wondering how you're going to get through the week is, is, is a result of uh, a system started by Thatcher, Thatcherism, perpetuated under New Labour and continued under the Conservatives with these horrific austerity cuts. And the interesting thing about my... Ah, but that's a different issue. You well, see, it's exactly the same it's, issue. Well, it's the interesting not actually, thing about, Are, are the you really blaming this on austerity? I'm, I'm saying austerity uh, exacerbated a pre-existing oh, condition right. begun okay. by Thatcherism and yeah. continued through New Labour. But the interesting thing about immigration is that, you know, there's a big difference between understanding that people are concerned about the strains caused by immigration and wanting to find solutions to that. So that would involve the sort of things that Jeremy Corbyn is talking about, which is making sure that employers don't undercut 
workers by bringing in cheaper migrant labor well, that's essentially which, that, that's the illegal part you of see we try and have this conversation about politics you actually never allow it do you can we yes, actually I, do. I just like putting points to you so it's not a mon monologue and what i'm saying is the undercutting of labor of, of paying below the minimum wage is essentially a phenomenon of illegal immigration it's not a phenomenon of illegal immigration it's a system by which companies are allowed to undercut local wages with migrant labor. The other way to address that is to look at areas that have been affected by large numbers of migrants and give them more funding. That's mm. something that the conservative government cut. The other way to look at it is to reskill a population or you could um, embark oh. on major infrastructure projects oh. like housing. Yeah. Which was particularly not and these, done. And these are all things that actually have let, been put forward by Jeremy Corbyn. Let me bring in Taz 